Hello, welcome to Powered Up with Kathy Perry. And today I have a wonderful guest on Susie Mordeaux, personal development coach. And she has a passion project that I'm so excited to share about. But first, I'm going to let Susie introduce herself and tell you a little bit more about her. Hi, thank you so much for having me on here, Kathy. And um, I love talking about passion projects and helping women um, who are often caregivers and giving to everybody else, figure out what their passion is, what lights them up and help them create it. One of the things that I've just done recently was um, I have this really cool book that's coming out called Love Is. And it's a collection of over 111 responses. When I ask people like, you know, finish the sentence, what love is, what would you say? And they sent it to me. And then, you know, we went to town on this book with some beautiful design. Wow. I love it. I love it. Well, explain to me a little bit more about how you decided to do a passion project. Well, the truth is I actually um, was coming out, uh, like I was in a grief period in my life. Like I had lost my mom about a year and a half ago and you're sort of feeling like, what is my purpose? What, what are we doing here? And I really do help women, even before this, um, figure out their passion and what are they into? And I, and I do have a very creative side and I've created some other products. And I just thought, what would lift me up while lifting everyone else up? Because, you know, post COVID there, we've, there's a lot of loss and what would feel good? What would, you know, help everyone perhaps? And I felt like I needed to co-create. I couldn't just do it all by myself. It felt too heavy. So I decided to throw it out to the people I know and let them share. And people from around the world sent back responses. And then from there, you know, I had fun with uh, the design of it with a designer and worked on it that way. And, and what do you feel like having that passion project, what did it do for you to lift you into a better place after that time of grieving? Yeah, well, I think you grieve all the time. And I think that that whole, right, one of the things that, you know, I, and, and grieving is actually love. It's like love with no place to go, right? That's so, that's what it's beautiful. Like. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Yes. And, and so um, it allowed my world to grow around like with the hole in my heart. I'm sure it'll probably always be there, but but allowing like, what can I do to sort of light me up? And so really what, you know, I, I have my sort of battle cry is always feel the love. It's always choosing love over fear and just how we walk the planet. And so what I really wanted to do here was just have an experience. It was less about, let's say like, you know, an ROI, what's the return on investment? How much does that cost? And are you going to make money back? And a passion project to me isn't about like, I'm, oh, I'm going to go get rich about it or rich on it or whatnot. It's just, um, the experience is worth the investment. And I'm sure I'll make the money back. Like I actually, that is baked in. You want to do that, but it's about the return on the experience. Like how did that enrich my life and what would that do? And it, and sort of modeling the way for my kids too, like, or anybody that, you know, perhaps has any interest in what I do, let's say. That's absolutely beautiful. Um, I know that I've, you know, as most people watching this have probably hit a time of grief or grieving. And I love that you, wrap that in love. I mean, it is, it's a, we do need to grieve, but we need to move forward knowing that it's because we loved. So that is absolutely beautiful. And especially as caregivers and in the senior living space where we experience death often and sometimes not knowing how to process it is um, hard. So thank you for giving some ways. And so I'm curious, what were some of the things that people revealed to you in, in the book? Anything stand, any one or two stand out to you? Well, what I found really interesting, and there are people from like eight to maybe 78 in the book, right? They're, you know, all different ages, um, the diverse backgrounds of people, genders, all of it. Um, some, I guess there's that book, like the love languages or the mm -hmm. you know, five love languages, the five language, right? So some of them are acts of service. Some of them are words of affirmation. Some of them are actual things, gifts. And um, what I found really interesting is that, you know, and, it's, and that it's not the ultimate end all be all answer of love. It's what was love. What did, how did they describe it in that very moment? And then how do we, you know, craft it into something beautiful? And I just felt you know, the perspectives, the different perspectives and male, female of the different ages 
um, you almost can see like a maturity as people get older, that there's something a little, it's greater than ourselves. Um, some of the younger ones, it's like, you know, pizza, it's like, you know, it's a little easier, um, but none of them are wrong, right? It's what it means to you in that moment. Yeah, that is beautiful, beautiful. And and how do you feel like this is going to help people? What, what do you hope that when someone opens that book and goes through it, what are they going to walk away with? Well, honestly, I just think it's so damn happy. Like it's so pretty. And this is a mock-up, not the real one. But if I just were to even flip a little bit, it's really colorful. Oh, beautiful. It's, yeah. it's very fun. And so I think the way you digest it too, like you can open it up to any page or not. And I think that what, what um, I hope people get out of it is, you know, whether it's the book itself or the process of creating a book that anybody can do or be part of. And, and, and something that I, I guess I didn't mention is these are everyday people. This isn't about like getting the celebrities or the influencers or the gurus to like, what do you think it is? We all have that wisdom inside. And I believe that and I practice that and preach it. And um, having people be witnessed, right? Their name's now in a book and it's not as hard as just contributing and being part of it. And it's, um, I don't know, I feel like it becomes this little gem of uh, a community that all kind of decided to do something and just trust the process, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, as someone who helps people develop, you know, what do you think that they could use out of what you've gained from this experience to help them like with a next step? If someone's stuck or they don't know what next steps are, how do you help them? Well, so many people are stuck and we're all probably stuck in we're some area of our life. Yeah. Like nobody really is in flow at all times. Even if you are in the moment, something's going to, you know, get us stuck a little bit. And I think that having awareness first, just, you know, awareness of what makes you feel good and what you desire or what you want. So may, I know that seems simple, but most people, if you really ask them, they're uncertain. They're so busy giving to everybody else their whole life and especially women um, as caregivers that if I turn to you and say like, what do you want or what do you need? They sometimes get stomped, embarrassed, even like flush because nobody really ever asks them that. And so when you um, sit with it and be uncomfortable, um, it's really about getting first gaining awareness and then taking some action, just anything, any little step. It's not about I'm going to crush it and I'm going to do it and it's all or nothing. It's about just creating these little nuggets along the way that help improve your life. If that wow. makes sense. Yeah, that's great. And I, I love the way you tied it in with women and caregivers, because I do think, you know, statistics show the majority of caregivers, whether that's just for children or for aging parents, whatever it is, the majority are women. And we do, we're so used to putting others first. I used to have a saying that I was a chronic overgiver. Mm -hmm. And it took me a few years to step back from that and say, no, you know, you don't have to always give, give, give and start doing some of these things for yourself. So that's a beautiful message. So, yeah, I, I would, I will tell you in what you're saying, like one of the things my mom, who, again, this book's, you know, dedicated to, I used to say generosity was her growth strategy. She was like, give, 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 never give to me, never receive. And I would say to her, like, sometimes you have to take a minute and receive the praise or the thank you or whatever, because that's a gift. It's like an exchange. Yeah. And if you don't let somebody do for you and you don't take care of yourself, that whole oxygen mask thing, like I didn't even believe it when I was younger. I was so busy doing, doing, but, but the truth is you have to put it on or else you collapse and then the, no, you know, nobody else can get help. So you're too important not to take care of yourself and not to like, you know have some self-love and feel it. I love it. I love it. So I feel like your message is receive the love, give the love, but also just receive it, take it in. And mm -hmm. uh, that is absolutely beautiful because I think too many women, caregivers, whatever, are just so used to not receiving. So that's beautiful. Um, if someone would want to work with you or learn more about how you help people, mm -hmm. uh, where can they find you, Susie? 
They can find me. Uh, I have my own website, you know, www.suzymordo.com and S-U-S-I-E-M-O-R-D-O-H, little unusual.com. Um, I'm, so, I'm on social media, Suzy Mordo, both Facebook and Instagram. I don't have TikTok. Um, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> that's too much. Um, there's only so much. And um, yeah, and the book, love it's uh, loveisgiftbook.com, if for whatever reason that uh, appeals to anybody and eventually it'll be once it arrives it'll be on Amazon as well I love it I love it I could see giving it for a sh uh, you know a bridal shower or mm -hmm. uh, when somebody is grieving or you know for a birthday there's so many times when that book would be an appropriate expression to somebody yeah well I I one of the one of the um, entries is love is always the answer and so and I and for me I say love is our superpower so I believe that it's true. It can kind of, you know, fit in for anything. That's great. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And I, uh, your contact information will be in the show notes so people can connect, but I love the message and thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for having me and spreading the love. Awesome.